Hello my loves and welcome to day one of our 21 day self-love challenge. I'm so excited to hold one of these again with you. If you've followed me for a while, uh, I actually haven't held one in a couple years I think, but if you've been following me, you might have done one with me before. I have updated the challenge. As many of you may know if you're on my Instagram, I have been in quarantine for like 23 days now, uh, just in a room alone. I haven't talked much or anything, so I just felt this was really needed right now for myself, for my community, as many of you have been sharing that you're inside too. We're all dealing with our own challenges, with restrictions and everything else that's going on in the world, even if where you are is back to normal life. Um, we're always affected by the collective consciousness. Sorry, I'm a little bit sick still. Um, I did have COVID, I probably still have it. So because of this, usually I do a daily live on our 21 day challenge, but I'm just gonna be doing a video every few days because I need to honor how I'm feeling, uh, how my body's feeling and all of that. So I will be showing up as much as I can. And that's what self-love is, not pushing ourselves um, to give more than we can, to really take the time for self-care, uh, to be with myself and my practices while I'm healing. So for our first day, I wanted to share one of my favorite meditations, and I have shared this on my YouTube before, maybe if you're on my YouTube, you've done it with me. Uh, it's called Atisha's Meditation, which is a an ancient tantric meditation of love and self-love. So, if you want to join with me, we'll begin sitting up tall. And again, anyone who's on the challenge, you should have received a confirmation email and an email for day one. So just make sure that you're adding uh, that email, that sent it, my email, to your contacts so you don't miss anything. Okay, so getting into a comfortable seated position, gently closing the eyes. Sitting up tall, chin slightly tucked in. And just watching the breath for a moment. Watching it move in and out. And just noticing how you're feeling in this moment, physically, emotionally, mentally, anything that may be coming up, how you're feeling about beginning this challenge together, remembering why you've decided to take this journey with me and this community, what led you here, and your highest intention you should have set in the guidebook that you received and holding that intention in your heart through this journey together. Setting an intention now to also be gentle, patient with whatever comes up for you during this journey. To be gentle and loving to yourself. Knowing that you deserve wild, profound love, and you're able to give this to yourself. Now this meditation may seem counterproductive at first because we're breathing in pain and suffering, but we're breathing out love. So bringing your awareness into your heart space, Scanning the body, feeling the heart rise a little, the stomach rise with each inhale and going down with each exhale. And I'd like you to think of a time or a situation, something in your life currently. And I want you to think of a situation in your life currently that's causing you stress or pain, suffering. Usually the first thing that comes to mind is what you need to work with, work through. 
bring your awareness to. This could even be a physical pain within the body. It could be a situation at work or with someone else in a relationship. Situation that hasn't been getting figured out. It's not feeling good for you right now. I want you to envision that situation, maybe that person, that pain in the body. And with in each inhale, imagine that you're sucking out all of the suffering, the pain, resentment, whatever emotions are attached to the situation, envisioning it in front of you and sucking out all of that pain, all of that suffering, bringing it into the heart. Our heart is the great alchemist. We are able to transform these emotions into love, into light. This is really why I say our hearts are our super power. Really our resilient lotus hearts. They're able to take so much and to transform it and to continue loving. So with each inhale, breathing in through the mouth, but bring it to like a straw, sucking it out from that situation. Slowly bringing it to the heart and then keeping your mouth as a straw, blowing it back onto the situation, love and light and healing. Sucking in suffering, pain to the heart and blowing out love. Continuing. Blowing out healing to this situation, to this person, to this feeling. Inhaling, suffering. Exhaling, love. Inhaling pain, holding it in the heart, and exhaling love, healing. Next, I'd like you to envision someone in your life who's going through a difficult time, who's going through pain or trauma, suffering, addiction, whatever it may be, bringing them into your heart, bringing that situation they're going through and that person into your mind's eye, envisioning it in front of you, them in front of you, and again, sucking up all of their pain and suffering into your heart to be transformed into love and healing, blowing it back onto them in their situation. And continuing this. Letting your heart expand with the inhale. Filling up. Completely releasing with love. Continuing that breath, knowing that our intentions and what we create here individually does affect the collective, does affect those in our lives. What we create on our own affects collectively and vice versa. So we are all connected. 
knowing that you can shift the energy for yourself, for others, especially when it's coming from the heart. Breathing in suffering, breathing out love. Sounds like the ocean waves, the exhale. A wave of love. Finally, envisioning a situation in the world right now. There's so much suffering on our planet. Again, the first thing that comes up, holding that in front of you, watching it, bringing that picture into your mind. Maybe it's a group of people. Maybe it's the collective dealing with COVID or any situations that have happened this past year, transitions. Maybe it's a race, group, a culture, a country of people holding them, seeing them, and sucking up fully all of that suffering and pain into the heart to be transformed into our resilient, healing hearts. And blowing it on to that situation, to those people. Love and light. Continuing. <sighs> Breathing in pain. Breathing out love. Knowing as you do this, you're shifting your own frequency, your own aura. And letting your breath come back to normal. Deep belly breathing. Witnessing the belly expand and fall. Noticing if you're feeling any lighter than at the start of this practice, how your heart is feeling at this time. And knowing that when we do shift our frequency, when we do these practices, when we commit to them, to our daily sadhana, spiritual practice, we are shifting the collective. We're like that one little wave that keeps growing to everyone we touch, to everyone we speak to, everyone we come into contact with. They can feel that it's like electromagnetic frequency around you. And really what the world needs right now is so much love. We need so much love. That's why we're doing this challenge. We need it for ourselves. And when we start here, then it spreads out. Gently blinking your eyes open when you're ready. Thank you for joining me on this challenge for this practice. I'm really excited to see what comes, what grows for us. And yeah, thank you for prioritizing yourself. As I said, this is really what the world needs right now. It needs us to show up in love. If you have the guidebook you saw, this is the day on gratitude. So setting a reminder in your phone to list the things that you're grateful for a few times a day over the next 21 days. Gratitude for me, I deeply believe it's the foundation of self-love and just of living a high vibrational, joyful life. Many blessings, my loves, and please do share your journey. I would love to see what you're up to and how it's going for you.